Express LRS, that's a buzzword of the day, and Beta FPV being one of the manufacturers heavily involved in the development of what is an open source project. They've kindly sent me their one watt transmitter module and the little mini receiver to test, in anticipation of which I've looked on the interweb as usual, and there's a whole mountain of uh, videos out there, most of which seem to be incredibly complicated. It's GitHub repository this and flash that and Lua scripts and oh my word, what on earth are we getting into? All I really need to do to start with at least is to get the module recognized by my transmitter, bind it up to the receiver, put it in an aircraft and fly. I can get on to all the complicated stuff later. Let's see then if we can put this together in a more user-friendly manner. This being a quick start, I'm not going to go into what you can do with the USB port and why there's an XT30, the displays and the switches on the back. That will be covered in a later video. Suffice it to say, it needs to go in the back of my Tyrannus, which is usually occupied by my multi-protocol module. Let's get rid of that. that. Then should just plug straight in. That's nice and snug in there. Most important, it's always important, but especially important with this module being able to output much higher powers, always make sure that there's an antenna connected before you power the thing up. Also talking about power, the maximum voltage of the module is 12 volts. If you've upgraded your battery in here, maybe a 3S LiPo, then that voltage is going to be too high. I am using a 3S, but it's a life battery, so it's around 10 volts. So we should be safe. Having switched on then, looking on the back, we have a flashing LED and just the ELRS logo on the unit there. I'm not going to touch anything else for the moment. I like to use my old Bixler model as a test platform, so I've selected that in my Tyrannus. Clicking the menu, you can see here the internal RF of course is off, as I've been using my multi-protocol module. We go down here, select in there, and we need to change that to the crossfire, the CRSF mode. Enter that. I think that's all I need to do for that moment. Flipping over to the back now then, just pushing the little button there gives us access to the menu. We have the packet rate and all the other good stuff, but down here we also have bind. The little receiver then, you need between 5 and 9 volts to power it, and what I've read is that you need to connect and disconnect the power three times for it to get into its bind mode. I have then a 7.4 2S LiPo and carefully the negative is on the outside here and positive in the middle. One, two, three. And we're getting this double flash which I believe means it's in its binding mode. Maybe I'd hear the little fan has come on. By default, it's at one watt. I'm going to go in there and knock that down to the minimum of 250 milliwatts. Then going back down and bind. Well, that was very quick, if indeed it's worked. The LED has gone solid. As I've switched the power down, the fan has gone off on the module there. Um, let me just grab a servo. Throwing caution to the wind, we'll just plug this servo into channel 1, which is down here. And there we can see, obviously I haven't messed around with the mapping on my Tyrannus yet, but the servo is moving on the elevator stick there at the moment. Things are looking good.
let me now throw this into the Bixler and sort out the rest of the calibration and we'll come back. Now the astute amongst you, which I guess is probably all of you, would have realised that in my excitement I actually plugged the servo into channel 2, not channel 1, hence why the elevator function was working. Having plugged it into the model and plugged everything into the correct channels, I now have my aileron movements, elevator, rudder, throttle active, and throttle function. As I've only changed the receiver, all the rest of the setup of my Tyrannus is the same. So I have rates. Elevator rates 50%. Elevator load. Elevator load. Aileron rates 50%. So everything is as before. My only question at this point is the orientation of the antenna. From what I know of RF theory, the sort of lobe of the signal strength should be coming out this way with very little to nothing towards the ends. Therefore, perhaps it's logical to put it uh, in a orientation like this, such that I'm getting reception laterally, as, as it were, unless it's flying directly above me, or in the unlikely event I turn it upside down, that shouldn't be a problem. What I'm going to do then, I have some set of tape from my last installation just to tape the antenna there and see how that works out. Bearing in mind that I've switched the output power right down to only 25 milliwatts, I think a range check would be a, a sane idea before the first flight. Speaking of which, hopefully in the not too distant future, the next day or so, should be able to get the thing up in the air and test it for real. Today then, the first flight with the Beta FPV ELRS system. See my little antenna stuck on the, on the side there now. First thing I've got to do is to uh, get it range checked. I'll stick at the 25 milliwatt level, unless the range check reveals uh, an issue with that. And we'll see how we get on. Good morning, gentlemen. Morning, Dave. I have a special request, sir. I am trying a new transmitter module and receiver, so I think I need to do a range. So uh, I guess if I wiggle the uh, yeah, have you got a on, switch on it to to do a range test? Or uh, no? no, in this particular instance, I just want to use it as it as it is. So if I wander off up there, yeah. well, I'll, I'll wander up. And you yeah. Can, you can do it. 30, 30 paces is the usual. Okay. We can go a bit further. <laughs> yeah, do it. Okay. That should be a, a goodly distance. And just a... That sounds good. Just a quick sanity check on the movement direction. So, we're going up that way. And down is up, and up is down, and left and right. It's a bit off, isn't it? Somewhere there. Okay. Yeah. Nicely done, Roly. Well done, mate. Aced it. Hey? You aced it. <laughs> it wheels only, won't it? No, so we look at it. Perfect. Oh. You have to get a shoot on the back of something. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that or an anchor that just dropped yeah. off. An anchor, yeah. Okay, how are we doing? All right, let's go. Wait. 
Aye, uh, thank you, Graham. Keep it close, just in case. Well, yeah. It's only on 25 milliwatts. Reducing the throttle down there. That's a fair distance away and uh, still responding normally. Let's just cut the throttle and check the glide. Turn it round into the wind. That seems to be flying as well as it usually does for the big slur. It's just gliding there, no power. Quite a float of this. Doesn't want to come down. Yeah, pretty much overhead. Let's put some power on. Not noticing any glitches at all there. when it goes directly overhead. Not sure if my theory about the positioning of the dipole is correct or not. No doubt somebody will correct me. On, so we're going to have to rely on the audio from the little microphone there. Hopefully that should be sufficient.
there she is down. So, as far as I'm concerned, a very successful first flight with the Beta FPV ELRS system.